Welcome to your Monday Morning Roast. I'm your host, Joe Webb, along with my co-hosts and best industry friends, Bill Playford, Brent Weiss, David Hudson, and surprisingly, Eric Milch. What? Uh, we're going to have a couple special guests on today. Uh, this is our 13th episode, and our show is the equivalent of friends gathering around the old water cooler, coffee in hand, catching up uh, with each other's lives, talking about current events. Uh, today's topic is going to be fuck Facebook. And there's a lot of reasons that we're all excited to talk about this one topic. Uh, so let me first just start out and say cheers, boys. Oh, I got to get my coffee. Oh, Jesus. Here, then I'll, I'll, do, it from, I'll do it from this angle. Wow. Here, I'll, uh, oh, very nice. Look at that. What's that say? <laughs> it's commemorative. Anyway, um, let me just ask you really quickly because uh, listen, Joe, in that same spirit. Yeah. Yeah. This is called. This is what happens. Vista Bay is only for morning drinking. This Speaking part of this. Facebook. This segment is brought to you by Vista Bay when you definitely need to morning drink. <laughs> Facebook <laughs> being a global brand, but we're going to talk about how it relates to us here in the States. Um, we've all been on Facebook for what? Probably going on over a decade now, correct? All of us have yep. been on for over a decade. Yeah, unfortunately. Our kids, our kids have grown up on this application. On yep. this no. No, no, no. When I say grown up, I'm saying During, in there. you have, yeah, we have been able to see how Mags has grown. Oh, I see. Okay. Bill's yeah, children have grown, how my children have grown, how Alexander has grown, as Cooper, well, Eric never posts about his kids but how Cooper and Parker have grown uh, over the course of the last uh, 10 to 12 years of lives. And I feel that it has taken a very different turn than how it initially started out. Uh, so let me ask, and I'll start with you, Brent. Do you feel that Facebook is no longer a social media, a medium, but it's become more of a media company? Oh, I, I, absolutely, and it, it's been uh, it's been speculated that that's what it was going to be all along. And and I know in its inception uh, to go way back. So back in early dashboard days, we were given accounts on the platform as a development team, even though we weren't in a in a university program. So they gave us accounts underneath one of the universities in Toronto, so we could get in and start understanding it because we were actually one of the first agencies in their development platform long before they opened it up to developers. So I knew even back geez, a decade ago that they were going to monetize it somehow. So, you know, it's just one of those things that you never, like the social aspect of it was, was so, so much better back then. Like the, just the, the sharing of content and, and like I said, watching, watching things happen with your friends that were far away. However, you know, that, that advertising component or mechanism of it was, was always looming like they all are. They have to monetize themselves some way. And uh, it, one, way or the, one way or another was going to do it. So yeah, it's a, it's a media platform. It's not a so, you know, social platform because there's not a lot. Well, there's still social aspects about it, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's a media. Interactive platform. media. Yeah. Mm. So, so let me ask Eric, uh, and I don't know if you're muted because your dogs are around, but uh, allow me to ask, do you feel that Facebook should, not should, do you feel that Facebook should be required to uh, do some level of fact checking on what people post? Yeah, I absolutely do. I mean, that's a, that's a basic, I think that's a, just a basic uh, necessity. They absolutely have to be. Um, they ha they have to realize the scale and magnitude of their, uh, you know, of the reach that they have, and obviously the sheer amount of people. And here's the difference, though, Joe. Facebook is what we would define as, or what they we, they basically define themselves as a network centric type of social media platform, where the things that we are exposed to and the things that we are sharing ourselves only impacts the network that we're connected with. So we don't see things on, you don't notice you don't go to Facebook to see stuff from strangers, unless you, you might see stuff from people you don't know that were, you know, famous sure. people possibly, but 
by and large, you're only, it's being powered by this concept of a network centric platform. And now you compare and contrast that to the difference of what you're seeing on say something like TikTok that is technically an AI centric type of platform that is powered by a much smarter algorithm and a, a system that is basically showing you what you uh, are interested in based on your own behavior. You know, similar to how uh, similar to how YouTube learns, obviously, what you watch just basically on your comments and your likes and your shares. You know, where that's not that's not you know, the same. So, Facebook has a different level of power because what's being shown. You know, it, I, I've often called it. It's more of a it's more of a an accelerator of the um, uh, uh, the echo chamber accelerator accelerator essentially because your network just keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter around one specific issue until you have a bunch of, uh, you know, just a, you get a bunch of similar, you know, people with the same interests, you know, without any diversification. So, you know, contrast that, you know, Bill, just like the, the, the example that I sent you last night, you know, I found that, that TikTok video, shared it with you and, you know, that I, I didn't go searching for that. You know, it found me based on my exposure. I don't know who that person was, you know, but it's completely different experience. So again, tying it all back, Joe, short, long, short answer. Absolutely. I don't see why the issue is, you know, the only thing I think of, and I'm sure other people think the same way when, when that decision isn't made to do something like that, obviously people start thinking that Zuckerberg or whoever else is leading the charge. Obviously there's a money trail to it, which blows me away because he's got more money than, than anybody will ever need. But the fact is there's still a, a control. There's still something else controlling it. So I don't understand what the issue is. If there are that many people you know, in the, on the, in the world that have the ability to be connected through uh, a platform like that and then see just terrible garbage crap that is being passed along as legitimate news and facts. Uh, nah, that I doesn't that's make any your, sense. That's your answer though, is that it's not connected to everybody. I think that, uh, cause I'm, I'm with Brent. I mean, to me, the writing was on the wall. Unless they charge a subscription for it, they're going to make money somehow. When you get into bed with a lot of venture capital, especially the type of venture capital that Facebook got in bed with, um, they're going to want their money back. So you got, you got to figure out how you're going to deliver on that. And I think that, that, you know, outside of a handful of businesses, the overwhelming majority exists to make you know money for somebody. I don't think Zuckerberg's got more money than God. It's all on paper, uh, but he's got probably more than than I'll ever have. But I mean, I, I really don't think it's nearly as sophisticated as what we think it is. I think we give it way too much credit in terms of what the algorithm does. And I, I think to Eric's point, I think he's right. I think it's. And I've I've gone on record saying this before. I think it's it's one big giant confirmation bias you know, orgy on there where people just talk to, to who they agree with. And, and I, I would uh, certainly challenge the audience to like actually look at how many friends you have on Facebook and how many actually even post anything versus what gets posted. And I, I just think we, we see a tiny fraction of what actually is being posted. And I do think that it is manipulated. I think it's manipulated to get activity. I know Joe's said it before, but I think that's, that's sort of the metric they use internally, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's the metric that they use to think that, hey, we're doing a good job. This is what they sell to advertisers. Hey, we get all this activity. Well, when all the activities about, you know, pedophiles and, and, you know, all these political tinfoil hat posts and everything else, like, yeah, it's going to generate a lot of activity, but it's all negative activity. But at the so, same time, they, they know they're taking the typical media uh, perspective and saying, okay, we have a platform, and in order for us to get engagement, we have to have a situation. We have to have a catalyst to create an emotional drama. Uh, trigger. Yeah, there has to be something. It could be, you know, any level of drama, emotional, you know, sadness, you know, happiness, drama. you know, yeah, mostly right. anger. And that anger is what creates that response. That's all they, they don't care what the yeah, emotion is. It's synthetic. The that's, that's where I'm like, fuck Facebook, because that's synthetic. They have to create some sort of depression to get people to comment when to me, like I look at it during the, the, the days of white picket fences and so on, like when it was just about like Joe uh, tagging me in a post with all of the Thomas, the trains, this is going to jog a memory for him, but like mm -hmm. 12 years ago, maybe something like that. He posted that. And like, that's 
kind of what I liked about Facebook is it allowed me to stay connected to my friends who are right. all over the world. I mean, that's, that's one of the cool parts of going to college and grad school is you, you meet a lot of people from a lot of crazy places. And I liked it for that because it allows us to stay connected. So I miss that, all the content that, though. Is that Facebook's fault or is that our fault? It's a great question. Yeah. You know, that's it's a really like when question. we're posting those things, it, it was new and we're, I mean, I was connecting with people that I hadn't talked to in years. And now I'm able to have these, relationships with these people who I probably wouldn't have had before and I felt really good about that right um and um so so what happened then did did we um uh, did the political um uh world start fucking with us and now we're saying things and picking sides which people do right that's that's the whole point right you pick your side and you fight it out you know um David, or did that, did that did these things start getting introduced to us in a different way, so then we would react. Is it our fault because that's what we want, or is it their fault because that's what we would we're enticed with? That's a great question. Yeah, you no. Know, here, let me. Uh, I'm going to bring on our first guest, uh, Sean Stapleton. God uh, damn it! Who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring on Sean here as soon as we can see his video and he unmutes himself. Oh, David. Uh, Holy crap. It's oh, David yeah. Holy Holy cow. I'll be your Huckleberry. Beautiful. I mean, he oh, is, a mustache. He is the father in every 1970s porn. He's a mall cop. <laughs> this is dangerous. My kids won't talk to me with this. They think I'm an outlaw. Dude, no <laughs> one's going to talk to you with that. <laughs> hey, your, di your dial-up internet, Sean, in your bunker is shitty. Can you, you got, can you go somewhere better in your house? To, for a guy who apparently like is so successful, you probably can get some better fucking internet. <laughs> I get it, so it's like I got a scrim in a cup. You're talking about you know Facebook. My kids don't even do Facebook anymore. It's just TikTok and video, which means you better have a covert sized bandwidth pipe or you're screwed. <laughs> right. So, so Sean, we're talking about Facebook, and and obviously there's no way to talk about Facebook without talking about how it's changed and gotten a lot sort of more antagonistic. So one of the things why I want to say fuck Facebook is because I already know that Facebook has put out the data that antagonistic posts or posts that you disagree with, controversial posts, yield a higher level of engagement, yield more comments, everything, more time on site than if you only were to see things that you agree with. So for that reason, what uh, what I believe they did is they are more apt to show you people whose posts disagree with your own because they know. So when, when I log in, I don't get to see Eric, who I always agree with, or who I almost always agree with. And listen, we're all from different political parties here. All of us. It's literally three on three. It really doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is they, the platform is force feeding us not education to make us open our minds but oh. things to make us angry definitely and i'd love your perspective sean uh like how do you use facebook now yourself and how has that changed over the last 10 years oh my god first of all i'm still in facebook jail eric's got me in facebook jail right so i'm not allowed to do anything i, I have to send him every one of my posts and he goes ah thumbs down but what they're missing is a sarcasm button. I want to be able to say something. I'm just freaking kidding. Settle the fuck down. There are days I'm in a bad mood. I just want to go post something like, you know, why is it such a good year? You're a piece of shit. And just watch people attack me. Like, how many people can I stir up like murder hornets in 30 seconds or less? You used to go into a bar and yell something crazy. Now you do is put some controversial message on Facebook. And in 30 seconds, everybody you know is attacking you. And it doesn't even have to be controversial. It just no, has to be the middle of the road. And it's how somebody else's mood is or their perception of somebody. And they're triggered on that. And all of a sudden, all hellfire rains down. Well, I mean, I want to make sure I understand. I, did I hear Sean say that um, he will indeed purposely say things to oh, yeah. the pot? Oh, so yeah. Like this. So that, so that, so that, here's how I feel. You know, uh, is it us that's fucking it up? <laughs> or is it Facebook? And here today, Sean, it looks like it's you, the one who's fucking it all up, man. Well, <laughs> well, I, want ask, I want to ask a question to Sean, though, because Sean's a guy who's got some pretty heavy balls, right? Do you think that Facebook... He's, he's that old? 
He is. Yeah, they touch the water. Um, so don't let the black arm card. Okay. So, um, don't wear, the, don't wear the loose do shorts. Do you think that Facebook has made people braver? Because that's what I think comes down to. Is I think it's a, it's almost kind of like what Dave's saying, but people all this, you use the bar analogy. If you want to touch off the bar, you better be a badass to, to back it up. And on Facebook, like you can't go to fisticuffs. You could just, it's just like a bunch of like, you know, fights like that. That's all you can muster with uh, social media. So uh, tell me, do you think it's made people braver in that respect? I think, I think it's brought out uh, the courage for people to be more controversial, right? And I do believe that people like to go stir the turds, you know, and I, I think um, a lot of people, you know, you have your good friends and you have your friends you like to terrorize. Facebook's the greatest and easiest way to start a fight. There's no better way to start a fight in America anymore than just logging into Facebook and doing anything. And again, so like there it is. It's just a tool. <laughs> it's just a tool. How you wield it is up to you. So here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share just a little bit of the data because uh, a study was done that actually has listed uh, on three, like 3.8 billion uh, amounts, 3.8 billion times in the past year that there has been health misinformation. And they believe Facebook is actually, because of this, a danger to public health. And for that reason, of the 3.8 billion times there's been health misinformation, Facebook has fact-checked and caught only 16% of it. Wow. So, I think they also, didn't they also say, though, that their AI is not up to par to be able to catch that yet? So they're still trailing on that. So they're still relying on human, uh, the human element, which is never going to catch that. Yeah, well, and, and oh, here's the problem another one. is we have friends in our industry that – like share this uh, like hateful rhetoric, if you will, it'll get automatically labeled as false. So they'll go find the original post, screenshot it against it, and then just share the image of the false information mm. and say like, look at what they're trying to hide from me from sharing. They're against me. Like no matter what the rule of thumb is, if somebody disagrees with whatever bullshit you come up with, then it, the other people are trying to you know, suffocate the truth. For some reason, like or your version of the truth, and like I think it's sadly drama. What? What's that, Sean? It's like a Sean Bradley search post. He tries to suppress it. <laughs> so, well, so here, I, what I will say it at the end. No of the industry talk. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hey, allowed. <laughs> Objection <laughs> overruled. <laughs> so, but, but here and and moreover, uh, and I just uh, found another. Uh, link here somewhere that'll that'll have to find. Well, uh, hey, let me give you a chance to pull it up real quick though, because like I said, I, I think cause Sean brings up an interesting point though. Do you think that some people post this stuff, trying to be sarcastic, thinking people can like see right through it, and then all of a sudden they take it seriously, like these things where it's like very obviously like a Breitbart post or something like that. Listen, for and, the longest, I, I've had I myself have I think put on one or two political posts ever. And yet, what I will find is I do admittedly go onto other people's uh, posts and comment uh, if I feel that I can be an educational resource. Hey, at the end, I try to be an educator. I try to make people uh, recognize that there's a better way to do things or that maybe their previous thought process isn't correct. So I will go and absolutely, sometimes like Sean said, sarcastically, but inevitably, there will always be only truth behind it. And, and I think people are so opposed to being objected to on their platform. Facebook has turned us all into a me generation. Oh, this yeah. Is me. This is about me. And it's what I believe and what you should believe. And so for that reason, I feel that it's pulled me down into the well to make me get dirty with the pigs. Because I'm like, you can't honestly believe that that this is real right like you can't you like the, you have to I, I get mad that i might be connected to people that are as stupid as they're as they're posting about well joe remember we were talking about this in terms of just playing the i game you can re, you can really tell a lot about somebody just about the writing style of the post that they use if every single post starts off with i me i me i if it's all you know, count the eyes in the post they'll get a real good glimpse on where that person's coming from. And even better, the typical response in a, in a, in a, in a reply thread 
Okay, if somebody makes a post, it mentions somebody else, and the thread is all about something going on over here, but yet in comes you know, visitor number three. And what do they reply with? Oh, I used to do this. I used to know that guy, or I used to live on that street. It's like, where did, where did this come from? This has nothing yeah. to do with it. It's not about you. Yeah, you know, and that's just where everybody's focus is on it. Yeah, you know, that that part of it is where I'm just like, hmm, that's enough. Well, it's this it's this bizarro kinship of suffering, like on Facebook. You know, like everybody, everybody. Wait, what's Stapleton that's a piece doing? Of swag, just, right there. Wait, sorry. Bizarro there kinship of traction. Bizarro kinship of suffering. Uh, the Sean Stapleton. Podcast. Bizarro kinship of suffering is Sean's mean? wrestling name. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I need I need four of those for this weekend. Actually, it's you're, funny that Stapes just put that on because I. I need them. Um, but uh, yeah, I just like to your point, Eric, about people weighing in. Oh my on God, I that... see the mustache. Put the mask back on. Yeah, ah! exactly. You scared my dog. Um, but I think, I think you're right with that is, is where people will put things and it's a, um, I don't know, like we call it like the, you know, there's terms for it, but people will put things out to like to feel better about something or people will put things out there dopamine on fix. that. Yeah, it's a dopamine fix and, and, and good for them if that's what you have to use to get that or if you have to post things, but ha it has this hot electric pail of garbage that people are on every day. It's it's just what sort of mental health impact does that actually have on people mm -hmm. by, by doing that or are engaging in that every single day? Like I, I you know, full disclosure, like uh, other than checking on business accounts for clients, I'm off of it. I don't use it. You know, I it's funny, you start talking. Phone about a month well, ago. I haven't been on my phone for a long time, but I, I really have no point of being on it because in reality, you have the people that are posting on it are taking that same content and posting it across every single yeah, bit of their right, channel. Right. That's, that's, yeah. So I can see it on Twitter. I can see it on this, but there's this weird, and I think I, tweeted about it. it's like you know if i if i feel like i want to i don't know there's, there's just something about it that you can you can post something about something you believe strongly in and you might have gone out and really researched whatever you're talking about dug into it like your your take and an old prof of mine in college always said how do you how do you earn respect you give it so he always said like as long as it's not hurtful or hateful if someone's taken the time to to present um a, a thought process and 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 something that they they put some time and, and, and energy into, you have to give them the time and respect. I think what happens here is because we have gone into this whole realm of just headline reading that people put out their, their commentary, but they actually haven't dug in. That's why it's always interesting to see when someone comes on and sort of smooths out the waters when something flames up and then people just they can't take it because someone's actually done the work. It's like, I, I have more respect for someone who actually thinks about it, put, puts in time and time and energy to understand it. There's that, but there's also this, like the, like to David's point, the dopamine fix of like when, when people post and just, I don't know what better say, poor me posts. It's like, I get it, but right. maybe that's a weird mental health thing. It's like, are you crying for help or is it a, or is it a, is it a false cry for help, right? Like, should you be reaching out to someone? Like, are there people in your fucking house that maybe you should be talking to <laughs> and not posting it on Facebook for like the for the virtual world to like deal with? Like, you know, like honestly, like there there's a bunch of people on this call right now that if I'm if I'm feeling fucked up about something and Lisa's not immediately around for me to talk to, I know I can pick up the phone and call one of you bozos. But that's what I mean by that. Like that's that's a personal thing. I don't, I'm not going to post, you know, I'm thinking, you know, it's been 25 years, but tonight I'm fucked up and I'm feeling about going out drinking. I'm not posting that on the fucking social channel to freak my mom yeah. out or relatives or, or anything else, but people do this all the time and they spin up audiences in this weird sort of kind mm -hmm. of, I, you know, now I get to show everyone how much I care. I, yeah. I don't know. It, it's fucking, well, look, there's, there's, the whole thing is to unpack there. There's lots to unpack there, but I, I think there's something I, I got from that. I think that really applies to Sean though, is I think it's like the reaction. Cause I, I, I've seen some of your posts. Like I said, I think you're laughing right now with your Paul Blart mustache, but like you, you do yeah. things to, to kind of fuck with people, but, but then you get people who think you're I, serious though. And that's yeah. the thing. You have some followers that are like, should be committed. Oh, yeah. in responses And, uh, it's crazy some of these things that, they, that people say, like, yeah, it's always like, give him hell, you know? And it's like, 
okay, if he was joking, then it wasn't clear. But then it's like you show your true colors in those situations. Well, it's scary. Some of those people write on those posts. And, you know, I like to play this game. Post something, log off for an hour, and then roll the dice. You might have more positives and more negatives, right? It's a drinking mm -hmm. we play. Is it going to be a positive post or a negative? And can you get more negative posts than positives, right? And it doesn't matter what you put these days because people are just pent up and angry and, and this pandemic mental capacity of people. There, mm. there is sarcasm anymore. Joe, I love your stuff online. I wait for your tweets on your movies all the time. 326 movie. Great this, great that, and she's got amazing boobs. Wait, no, not that part. But you get what I'm saying, right? I haven't, uh, I haven't posted that one yet. There, I, there, that, there you go. <laughs> like, if I... If I can, one of the beauties about Facebook is you'd be at a conference and you'd run into somebody that you've been connected to for like a year. And all of a sudden, like, you know them, you see them, they're a real live person. It's like, hey, there's big hugs. Uh, now it's, I imagine when we do ever get back into a real normal society and we're walking by, you're like, well, that person thought COVID was a hoax. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, like yeah. You're, you're connected with people and that's what you're going to be saying. You're not going to be like, hey, how you been? You're going to be like, oh, man. Oh, know. he, he likes the, he likes that QAnon fella. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm afraid, like, it, I think it, everybody here, the six of us, like, uh, I don't care what anybody, uh, anybody's political things are. We're lifelong friends and we're going to, we're going to get along regardless, but it still can't, it still makes me sit back and be like, God damn it, he's stupid sometimes. You know, like, there's still oh, yeah. those. There's, there's still those instances where I, I really don't want Facebook to change my perception of people that yeah. I view as friends and the negatives. And I will say wholeheartedly, I've gone on the attack sometimes, I'll freely admit it, but I've been blocked. I have been blocked and I've been unfriended only because if you're going to, if you are ballsy enough to throw out severe hate rhetoric, misinformation, you know, racist, whatever. If you're going to go after that and then something happens to you, like you do catch COVID, guess what? Somebody deserves to kick this sand in your face and I will be that guy. And if it takes for you to unblock me or doing a post about me, because this really happened with one of our uh, friends, then then that's fine. I will I will steadfastly defend what I put out there just as I hope they too, they too do as well. That doesn't mean I want to wish anybody harm. It just means that that I like we can all disagree and things can get heated, but it gets to the point where it's Facebook is is purposefully changing our perception uh, perception of other people. And just yesterday, I mean, I will tell you from a political standpoint, yesterday or this week, Facebook let a big executive go who made it public that they were for uh, they were the algorithm they built was purposefully uh, leaning right wing heavy because they knew the, the right wing uh, political uh, followers are more apt right now to post sort of over the top information that yields them the highest results. So he saw this information, he said, Facebook is taking a political, is making a political determination and could in fact influence an election. So for that reason, why isn't Facebook, if they can build the algorithm that way, why can't they also build an algorithm that catches all the misinformation? Well, weren't they did they weren't they trumped up on this before too? Like they were doing oh. this in other <laughs> countries, <You're saying> right? <laughs> Trump. Yeah. <laughs> he's probably not watching this and tweeting about us anyways. He's got bigger he's got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> and uh, and what by fry I mean on his fish fillet hamburger. Yeah. I say be kidding. Sorry, Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can promise you things. There are days I'm in a good mood and I just put up the most inappropriate stuff just to see the reaction I get. There's one more game you all got to try. Tagging the person in the post that's completely the opposite. So <laughs> I'm going to have a double yeah. cheeseburger and the other person's like, I haven't eaten red meat or had salt in two years. I think cookies will make you go to hell. I'm like, I'm going to get myself a double cheeseburger and 14 cookies and a chocolate malt. And then I tag the healthiest person I know and just wait. It's like, so, watch this, set the bait. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's funny, it's funny that you, because I, I did a food analogy with a person who was really ranting and raving, uh, incorrect information. And I said, and then I came back to them. I said, listen, you said COVID's a hoax. Now you have COVID. You may have killed somebody. 
you know, with your with your anti-mask wearing rhetoric. You know, so I, I, I attacked him a little bit more than maybe I should have. But what I said is, hey, listen, I'm a big guy. You all know me. I'm a big guy. I could be a lot healthier. But you don't see me going and posting every day that fried chicken is good for you. Fried chicken being bad for you is, is, is a lie. The, the health food industry is lying to you. You better eat as much fried chicken as humanly possible. Because then guess what? When I have my first heart attack in four to five years, I want you guys to be like, what about all them fried chicken posts, Crick? That's optimistic. What about that? Like, I would I mean, want you guys to do that. But I don't do it. So because I don't do it, I would just expend sympathy. Hey, Joe, I hope you feel better. But if I was doing the fried chicken post, guess what? I'd want you guys to kick that shit at me. Now, Facebook as a company, as an organization, I feel has a responsibility to everybody to make sure that people and agents, there's a great book called Antisocial, uh, Antisocial by Andrew Morantz uh, that followed all these people that utilized specifically Facebook and social media to turn the tide of elections and to promote, willingly promote, incorrect information. There's another great documentary on Netflix, I think, called, um, it's called The Anti-Truth. I think it's called The Anti-Truth. And, uh, and it's all about Facebook and how there's people out there who purposely post negative or incorrect information just to try to influence the uneducated. And for the I reason- think that, I think that there's something to that. I think the whole notion of the, the fake news phenomenon is, is a product of that, honestly, because I think now there's a platform there and you can make money off these clicks. And so then now there's this pissing contest of who's got the fakest news, like the, uh, what is the OAN? What is that? I, I, I don't, I don't ever watch it, but I, I'll every now and then I'll post a clip. America one. It, it literally looks like a, like a total, like, like a, like a parody of a news network on a, in a movie or something like that. It's so particularly bad. And they're like most balanced news out there, you know? And like, it's so fake and yet by virtue of the background it's like cbt news mm -hmm. not stock industry but you get the little blinker on the bottom and you get the set and you get the blue screen and all of a sudden that shit is true well listen and listen it, what what hurts that is when the leader of the free world i don't know if we can call him that anymore but when, when uh the president of the united states is saying well don't even watch fox news anymore watch oan you know because again <laughs> confirmation bias he yeah. has tweeted that so you say, and listen, Bill, you're a staunch Republican, and you say, you say, listen, sure. I look at these things, and I you say, you label me a Republican every week, I think, but that's okay. Well, go ahead. No, yeah, are. yeah. <laughs> what about what about Sean? Sean's Green Party. No one's talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't pestilence and cows ever again. <laughs> so, uh, Eric, Eric. Oh, Eric is uh, Eric only voted for Leibowitz, and he does it every year. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you back to your other point though, in terms of uh, you know what it's what it's making us, uh, how it's making us perceive other people. Everything that's happened, whether it's the economic client, the climate, the political climate, obviously everything with COVID now, and I've been saying this to a lot of our customers as well. This has taken ten years of progress and condensed it down into you know six to eight months worth of change. And I, I personally believe we're seeing that happen as well with these relationships and contacts and friends that we have on social media platforms. Just as you said, you know, now, like you said, if we ever get back to normal, when we see these people, we're going to be like, oh, no, you know, I actually know what that person is like. And in time, you will always know the real true colors of somebody. This has just sped that up. And it's just put us through. It's, you know, it's like this is literally like hitting the fast forward button. We would have gotten there anyways, you know, and going even further back, you know, my original joke when we, when we got on Facebook, I, you know, 12 years ago, whatever it was, you know, it was about, oh, wow, look at this. I can now be connected with that person that was four lockers down from me that I didn't want to pay attention to back then in high school. You know, I wasn't friends with them after I graduated, but now for some reason I'm still connected with them. And now I have to have a very uncomfortable messenger, you know, conversation right. with them. Yeah, so it was all futile then. It's, this is just kind of speeding it up with that next level of relationships that we just inevitably fell into because of our profession. Yeah, and I, yeah. I kind of welcome that. And I, well, I think, know, I think part of that though is it, it forces us to pick teams we don't want to. Right. You know, I think that's. I mean, kind of what we're saying here. Like I said, so I've known Sean like four jobs ago for Sean, I think. But uh, I mean, like we were friends like 
firearms, kids go to Catholic schools. I mean, we had so much stuff in, in common. It's just people, you know I mean? It wasn't about like, okay, hey, I'm a Republican, he's a Republican. You know, it wasn't like that at all. Like we just had a lot of common things. But I think we engage in these platforms it like it, it tries to like drag us into that team like an adversarial type of yeah. of relationship. I mean, and Dave ha still has a great point. I mean, about is that is that Facebook's job, or is that our job as a society? But I, well, I certainly Facebook think Facebook is controlling the content in some cases, and they only like they silo people into these political parties or mm -hmm. these rifts. Then, in, and they for that reason, their algorithms show the people those things that they know, like you're absolutely right. If you go to your friends list and you scroll all the way down and you start clicking on those people, they're posting every day. They're posting every other day. They're not engaging with you. Facebook has decided who engages with you most. They show the people that they want to show you, but now they're showing you the people that they know sometimes are going to anger you the most. Yeah. Well, like, here's the key. Here's the other kicker. And, and Sean, you can answer this question. Share your you know, share it with how you've, you've expressed it in terms of what that change that's happened. How has it affected you? Not just in terms of what you post and how frequently or infrequently now you go on it, but what has it done for you in terms of being away from that as a platform? Because the old argument used to be, oh, you don't like the TV? You don't like what they're showing on it? Turn it off. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what, you know, that's what people are doing. But it, it, the end result is what, Sean? It's unbelievable how it's polarized people. Right, and it, it, you have to be so much more cautious today. Look, there are posts that Joe makes that I laugh my tail off. But if someone goes, and I don't even agree with them, if someone goes attacks them, I feel like I had to defend him because he's a friend of mine or any of you guys, right? But then there are posts that you put up that are just milk toast, and somebody else goes nuts. So I've I've had to water my post down so much. It's not even the real me anymore. I kind of I kind of put things on there now that that are not going to draw attention to it more like I just like to be a creep you know like just to sit out there and, and kind of read everyone else's posts but you don't know what's going to drive people crazy these days and I feel like between the sarcasm filter being missing and the amount of negativity you know I get off I get off like you know Facebook I'm depressed I'm like oh I'm extra fat I've lost all my hair I'm poor and I don't have you know cool boats and stuff like that but then I realize oh my god they didn't post the shitty part of the life they only posted the cool part you know, no one gets out and goes, I woke up with a hemorrhoid today. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> listen, yeah, hey, listen. Uh, I will, I've always said uh, Facebook is all uh, falsities because if it was real, it would just be, well, I got into a shouting match with my wife while I was on the toilet and she stood in the bathroom watching me poop today. Like, that is what every every post would be for the most part. But um, and, and the truth is, the truth is Facebook used to be, there used to be a rule of Facebook. Facebook is, Facebook is what you're doing. Facebook and, had rules, but no, no. It's sort of like what people what people posted. What people posted is Facebook was what you're doing, and Instagram is what you dream. You know, and mm. you know one was pretty colors and pictures, and then the Facebook it's how you're living your life. But it's, no, it's interesting. Now when, it's when trying to promote uh, our uh, well, go ahead. You're going to say, but uh, what I'll say, Facebook's trying to promote our uh, most unfortunate aspects about each other and rub it in the faces of other people. I, I really think that that has taken a turn from the early years. I remember back in, you know, 08 or 2012, even around those, that era, uh, Joe, when we, when we shared the studio space together, yeah, uh, you know, just around that era, I remember even talking with people about how uh, it was more of this positive connecting thing. Mm -hmm you know um and man it's taking a real dark turn it's a it's a real divisive hateful tool um and and, and i remember even like like talking to him uh, this buddy of mine about it it actually being an etiquette to like be kind <laughs> on facebook well, don't you remember that one of the earlier one of the earlier rules was don't post anything on facebook that you know would probably upset your grandma yeah sure yeah. You know, it's like that went away a lot. Now people are blocking their grandma. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> listen. I think we almost need to. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, like I said, I think that th just like this last week, though, I mean, Sean posted some pictures from Yellowstone. Talk about being a creeper. But I mean, like, I noticed those pictures, and it made me think about Joe and I and, and, and then Joe and Melissa and I going to Yellowstone a couple times. And, like, I thought that was really cool. Like, I met 
that's the part about Facebook that I sort miss. of makes you want to stick with it because like I like those memories, like to see his family's having fun. I want to get back to Yellowstone, like, and that's what it used to be about, and that's where that that positive feeling came it's from. It's too, but but the whole but the whole platform though, and I get what you're saying, Bill. Yeah. Like, in, I get it in spades, but there, it's so the whole platform is so dirty now and so manipulative yeah. and so like the the whatever's going on in the back of it, right? Like, if you really yeah. dig into all the bullshit and shady crap that's going on with that organization, with how they're pulling data and how they're using it and how they're manipulating markets and commentary and everything else it's like fucking why why would does anyone of us want it? because yeah there, there there's that fraction of there's that fraction of hey it looks like Stapes is having a fucking great family vacation it's a it's a it's a minute part of it and the rest of it is just seeding bullshit and unnecessary commentary and then they're back channeling everything off to all this shitty stuff that's going like Fuck these guys, man! Like, oh, like, fuck it all. It's too bad. It's too bad they own Instagram because I love Instagram. It's I just too said bad it Susan the other day in terms of you know, like how you how you put it in terms of what people are actually watching and following and creeping on. You know, I firmly believe that a lot of the consumption that is happening are the people that are just simply following the people that they dislike the most. So that they can sure. bitch even more, and it makes them their lives even. And then it's just a self fulfilling prophecy of negative, you know, negativity. You know, and it's kind of like that old school uh, Howard Stern paradox. Remember the the rule was, you know, Howard Stern fans listen to him on the radio. Yeah. You know, at one level, the people that liked him, but the people that hated him listen to him up here, and that's the same exact thing. You know, and it kind of it, maybe it does fall back to the technology, Joe, where f Facebook is feeding that. And they're they're just you know fueling they're putting white gas on it to make sure that the the people that should be because they know what are religious political economic you know other all the other factors what do they like and then they're going to give them the polar opposite put them together and let's just watch the watch the drama unfold from there and then more importantly from a business standpoint let's sell ads to those people. Cool. So no, I, I disagree though because I disagree with that in part because it is echo chamber. You can't do both. You know what I mean? If I'm always checking in with my kids in front of the church, you know, at their different events and stuff like that, I think they're going to feed me more conservative rhetoric because of that. So I don't know if that's the case because you can't have an echo chamber and have something where it's completely combative at the same time algorithmically. Well, I, I, I think, Why not? That, I think that it, uh, depending on who you are, it will depend on this, if you, you're either this or you're that. Sometimes, you know, listen, there it is. <laughs> we need more of that, everybody. Um, Depending on who you are, if you are that conservative who likes to do the arguing, well, then you are going to see those opposite things. And mm -hmm. that's your engagement. So I think it can easily do both. Yeah. Are you signing? Yeah, you got a good one, Sean. I thank you for joining us. And I would love to have all of you come up to the house and let's have a, let's have a bastard event in my backyard. I, really, I miss the hugs. This, this video stuff's great, but I got more chins than a Chinese phone book, so I don't look good on camera. Yeah. So, you sure do. I love you all. Peace out. Hey, thanks for being on. As soon as you, you shave your mustache, I'll be there again. She <laughs> wears a mustache. She wears hey! one. <laughs> so anyway. Um, Fucking mustache. But anyway. <laughs> I think of... Do you want to mention his uh, closing uh, statement? <laughs> yeah. No. I, I think of... Just like Eric's uncle. Eric's white gas. I mean, let, this is an all-inclusive show, for fuck's sake. Any color gas burns, Eric, okay? Even your yeah, flat. That, listen, that's right. It's all okay. fuel. It's all fuel for the fire. It's not good or bad. It's just fuel. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, I think Brent touched on an issue we really haven't even opened up is uh, how they're using the data. I mean, just uh, above and beyond an advertiser. I, I've told Bill as well that I remember one time I had to go to the office, and I'm walking around. My phone's in my pocket. My wallet's in my other pocket. And I'm saying, hey, babe, have you seen my keys? I can't find my keys. I lost my keys. Reach, I say it like three times, reach into a uh, couch cushion, pull it up. I drive to the office eight minutes later. Again, and I set up, I open it up. And just like every lazy son of a bitch, I crack open Facebook. It's one of the first like three or four uh, windows that I opened. And this was, this is several years ago. And right away, ta like the, the second thing is an ad, never lose your keys again. You know, tell, you know, 10 spots later. You know, you know, save your keys, loan your, lose your keys, track your keys. Like, they're listening. Bill and I were using the example 
uh, talking about Babe Ruth and how too many salespeople always try to swing for the fences, but we don't need Babe Ruths. We need people to put it in play. We need the Pete Roses of the world. And sure enough, within like four minutes later on Facebook, while we're talking, Babe Ruth memorabilia, Babe Ruth collectibles. It's too Babe random. Ruth. It's too random. Just yeah. too random. <laughs> well, same thing here recently, talking about my gutters with my buddy um, as we're driving. Before you know it, listen, that very, uh, minutes later opens it up and he sees it on his phone, you know, uh, blowers for gutters. Yeah. Well, it's like that time you, you were searching for that yeah. rash cream. You were talking about that. And it's just, God uh, damn it, that's no one's business. But I, it happened the other night. I actually asked, just out of the blue, I don't know where it came from. I said to Susan, hey, has have you heard or seen from anything from so-and-so? Just a long-time friend that she's been friends with. And she's like, no, you know what? Now that you mentioned it, I haven't. You know, I'm sure she's out there. Yeah, you know, and that was it. That was it. Two hours later, she opens yeah. up Facebook, first post, that woman. And she's <laughs> like, what? Yeah. So I will say, like, <laughs> and, and we, we can all, uh, we all. Who's their obituary? I mean, who the fuck it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, we all have our own stories of how Facebook has given us really genuine, amazing connections uh, and like lifelong friendships. And it's allowed us to grow our own businesses. I uh, can't wait I find of us. It allowed us to connect with. <laughs> It allowed us to connect with great people. And I think of, you know, even little things like uh, our good friend, AJ Maida, who used to come up to me all the time and he'd say, like, yeah. I love it. I would say, I love seeing pictures of Timmy and Ty smiling. Every single picture you do is Ty smiling. He knew my kids' names. AJ was a, a truly pure guy. I would, head. I would hate to imagine if AJ were around and he'd be posting stuff about, like, uh, like the type of negative stuff. I, I, I wouldn't want... To he would he would though because it's what it sucks you in to do and you were saying it joe before yeah. it's 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 baiting you to fucking get amped up and it's like that tweet i posted a bunch of weeks back like you know if feeling like getting into a fight with complete strangers log onto facebook right like it's just it's pulling you into the bullshit all the time and i really think it is and like you said aj was always great that way because aj would like go on your feed check out what you're doing and he would use that as part of your commentary and i would do oh i saw you know saw pictures of Bill's kids communions or whatever, or I saw, you know, Eric's last hair fall out of his head, whatever it was, I would he see these things. Facebook and, back in yeah, 1986. He did. It was 1975. There's no electricity with half. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. But now, but now like to your point, I re it just, when Joe said, I think they're, they're filling my feed full of things to, to antagonize me into other arguments. Right. And I just opened because, like I said, I'm never on Facebook and I just opened it up to see what's in my feed. And it's this hodgepodge of a friend's reno thing, uh, Michelle from Roadster's dog pictures. And so, like they have nothing to build off of for me. They have just posted kind of old school stuff that AJ used to comment on because I don't talk to anybody on it. I don't engage anybody on it. And the thing about it is they, they suck you into this and they make you think that you have um, an unsolicited opinion that you can push onto others. Like the amount of bullshit that's come through Facebook Messenger when I do open it from any number of stances that I may or may not agree with, but it's like, why are you sending, I didn't ask you for any of this. Yeah. So what, but that's what, what it friend. manifests into, not just on the walls, but people start sending you shit through their Messenger. It's like, I didn't ask you for this stuff. Yeah, isn't, that all, isn't, hey. isn't that uh, also a function of you not having a cell signal in the basement of the library you work in? Um, maybe that's it. That but I'll it. just point out, these these are Playboy magazines, and I could rather be flipping through them than talking to you fucking bozos. Hey, you saved one. <laughs> you saved that one for me, didn't you? I did, yeah. Lisa said, Lisa said you can't. Lisa said you can't have it, though. Oh. She, she, she said she might bring it. She said she might bring it at Thanksgiving. I asked if the for board open. I, I know. She's, she's, like, she's like, what's your price point, right? So, <laughs> so what I will say is, hey, hey, I'm going to ask a quick question. Um, and by the way, I love, love, love the unfollow button. And I think yeah. I've unfollowed so many, like, you know, I have a lot of weird hangups with Facebook where uh, I wish every single person I'm connected to every single day, a happy birthday. And then on my happy birthday, on my birthday, if 
somebody goes and posts and didn't didn't like me, I go down to the bottom of my friends list. I keep I keep an Excel sheet. I'm not joking. I write everybody's name on Excel, and I start gutting people, and I'll gut four, five, six, eight hundred people every single every <laughs> single year. I don't care. The weird part is Facebook doesn't tell you when somebody drops you, and inevitably, when I go and do a purge, a birthday purge, mm-hmm. inevitably birthday purge. <laughs> yeah, inevitably, about eight to ten people will like will friend request me back the next day, like they're watching me. Really freaky, but my question is: Do you think Facebook? has ruined more relationships uh, because, oh. Of, oh. because of because yes. of <laughs> so, Facebook has ruined more relationships through like the ability to connect and the adultery of it or do you think it's now speaking, ruined, speaking from experience ruined more yes. relationships oh, yeah it has or I do you it. think I would, more I, like, the, the real question of, is has it ruined more relationships than alcohol I mean because it, it it's yes. almost on the same level at this point. Yeah. I mean, Ease, easily. Yeah. It's and I, so- and I, you know, and, and candidly, and I, I tell people, but yeah, I, you're looking at a prime example. I, I fucking got sucked into that, and, and I happ- that. happily, and 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 yeah. when you know what, and I, not, I shouldn't say I got sucked into it. I, I jumped at, I jumped at it, jumped at, jumped at the opportunity to do it. Loved everything about it, and and went off and did that, and yeah, and just you know. It, did Facebook do that? No. Did did Facebook ultimately, you know, facilitated do, do, do it? That facil- accelerant. But it, oh. but it, 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 there you go. To Eric's point, it's, it was an accelerant to it. That's what it. That's it what it. Out it, helped it. it was going to come out it anyway. Was, because at some point or another, out. was going. It was going to go down. Facebook just pushed it ahead. It's just people. probably, probably, probably pushed it ahead two, two to three years. Well, going back to what Joe said, though, if, you know, Joe, uh, you know, Joe's seeing all these antagonistic posts, you know, it's like that old adage, if everyone you meet is an asshole, maybe it's you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Maybe. No, no, listen, we all know I'm an asshole. Okay. But, but, I, but to I, Bill's I, point, though, what, what was interesting, what, sorry to jump in, Joe, but what Bill said about like, you know, that al- like alcohol or drug addiction, uh, Facebook, the interesting thing about being a, an AA guy is there's 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 things to help drug addicts and alcoholics get figure out uh, figure out a way out right or, and and not just the rooms of AA and other things there's like rehabs and all sorts of things there's nothing for this right there's there's nothing unless you know a good therapist and and go and and, and work with that but really even even on a psychology like yeah psychologists are looking more at this more and more but unless you're talking to someone on a regular basis who's a professional that maybe can look at these channels and go, you've got to step away from this because here's how it's affecting you, right? There's, you know, be it Jungian or Freudian or however, whatever vein, there's something you can tie into these, these channels. But right now for people who aren't soliciting the advice of a educated, accredited professional, you're fucked, right? Like if you get, you get so drawn into this, you're, you're yeah. fucked. There's a good vein though. And for anybody who's just tuning in now or just fast forwarded, fuck Facebook. Um, but this is what I, I had to do because I, I honestly felt like it was affecting me, my, my emotions too much. Yeah, huh, That's yeah. the unfollow button got a little broken, but because I found myself being frustrated by something that I'm opting into, like, I don't have to look at this person, but I find myself being sucked in to their, shit-tastic lifestyles or other living or whatever dream they're living or whatever illusion they're trying to create and i had to do it because i was getting in a like a pretty depressed dark space because of it and it's crazy to think about that but it's there so is fa- so there's a there's another question that can be asked and thrown out is facebook just banking on people to not have that level of self-awareness to be able to Definitely. understand it. And now you're dealing with a different level of emotional intelligence, you know, in terms of people that, you know, someone like yourself that can say, I don't need that in my life. I'm going to change that, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and it's also, it, it's created, it's created this, and I, I was listening to it on a different podcast and I thought it was a good point. It's created this, this thinking that we, that we have an audience, right? Like we, we do this because we we want to talk about things we want to create we we want to create content but 
for the to the individual of you know someone that goes on Facebook Live, anybody for anything is like, okay, I'm just going to wait for some more people to log in. Like it's put it in all of us, not just those people in all of us that we have an audience. That not me. Know, I just what, set mine up and start setting up gear. I don't give a I shit. Know. You know, no, but but, but, but to that minutes, but to minutes. that point though, right? Like we, it, it has made us. It is it has put us into this mindset that you yeah. know there are people out there, and you know, and good on you, Dave. Like you, you set up, you go live, like a lot of musicians are right now, just streaming a lot of content because people can't get out. And good on you for that. But I think there's just people who come on and drive in their cars and talk about what's on their mind, or or you know, just set set different stories in motion yeah. like you, you know, know six six boomerangs in a row yeah. on Instagram. some do it for content and some do it for self-validation some do it out of like sheer depression uh, and i think some do it just because they uh like I, i'd like to think that i don't do anything for the validation I, I i've been trying to post a lot more stuff that's just like hey this is sort of fun and off the wall and who cares and if it's not that, it's a little, it's a little bit about my life, but I've told people like, I've never been pompous enough to create a page, a, a Joe yeah. business page. I'm just not that type of pompous idiot. Uh, but there are those that in, that we know that do that. And I think it's ridiculous. If, if that's the case, there's no reason for me to follow you whatsoever. But I, I love, one note on that, Joe, I love it though, when they, when people do make those personal business pages, and then they, they announce it. And so there's a mm -hmm. whole phase. There's a linear path. They make it. They announce it. They post to it. And then they in inevitably realize that that page doesn't get any traffic at all. And then yeah. they have to share their own post to their personal wall from their business page. It's, yeah. it's a vicious yeah. cycle. And then that I think it, Yeah. And I, and I think it, you know, I mean, there's, there's a, there's a method to it. And it's unfortunate. Like if you, if you are, you know, we've all had the good fortune of speaking at events and, and going to conferences and being, you know, being picked or asked to speak at these things. You have to use social media to promote that, promote sessions, promote your thought process. And, you know, what I, what I try to do on, 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 on Instagram anyways, now, like I know when, when shows are coming up, I'm way more active on it because I'm promoting, you know, like we've all, you know, Joe and, and, and Bill and I, we've had these joint sessions where we put out a lot of content, a lot of branded content towards the things we do. And I, and I think it's useful for that. So you're, you know, for a show aspect, so you know what's coming up and you can drive audience members to, you know, hear what you're trying to educate them on, you know, but I, but my departure from all of that, though, like, basically on Instagram is just like, that's where I'm trying to give people a glimpse into like, what my personal life is. And I'm just posting my skipping results to see if Crossroads Fitness will give you some fucking, on this, some on free, jump some free shit. Uh, did you get their app? It's badass. But I didn't get the, the thing, app okay. yet. I'm just right, like, well, I, yeah. we, I, I got a new rope, it's a speed rope. And um, I go for like a 10 minute session, you know, on and off, right? You know, get gas, get gassed, you know. Uh, my Achilles are killing me. My, my shin, my shin splints are, there's nothing like being a 51 year old dude and doing like 20 <laughs> minutes of these ropes. Just telling Eric and I were talking about behind the scenes, but it's funny about that because while like, you know, me, my, my buddy up in Montreal is like, you know, I, I was picking on him. He's like, well, it, it's better than posting fucking skipping results every day. Like he was, he was on me. And, uh, but it's interesting though, but he said by posting that, just by sharing something you're doing, like it's just something I'm doing, I'm kind of, I'm kind of geeked about. I do want to see if Crossropes like, you know, throws me a bit of swag because I, I, if they're, they're not watching this, but I'd love they're skipping that because I'm, I'm, I'm Frankensteining my own. But the part of it though that's interesting is when you're actually posting stuff that isn't political, isn't, this is my opinion on something, I'm just sharing like, like I, I maybe that's it because like CJ Romig always posts like his results from running. Like there's a dude that said I'm going to set off and, and run a marathon, right? He set off and did it. I didn't never want to run a marathon. I couldn't care less about running a marathon. But I thought you know what? During this pandemic, I'm you know maybe not doing as much as I used to do. So I want to start skipping rope. So I just started posting that just to go. This is what I'm doing. And I like Hudson and I were talking about it behind the scenes. But I've had more people in our industry actually reach out and go what are those ropes called like where do right. i get them like what where like here go get this and like i said they down like they got a free app and just to get in to do some of their workouts and stuff but that's that's just sharing stuff you're doing that's not like that's yeah. not saying this is the only way to go with this but that's just, oh, that's old that's school. just kids that's pets, old school. kids pets family and fucking exercise that's and music true. right yeah, like stick to the basics that's what i've been doing with my kayaking i've I had yeah a yeah. of people that's awesome you go and be like where are you what is that how is it is it fun is it hard well, you know it's like 
Yeah. Say, those aren't my yeah. pictures. I get yeah, those. Yeah. Download yeah. those. Yeah. I'm just getting a sub. What's going on? Yeah. Um, a, so uh, the, uh, but I think that's, that's the redeeming quality of Facebook though, right? I mean, that's, that's yeah. what maybe whatever our age bracket wants to tune into, that's stuff we appreciate. Like um, one of the several times you were not here, Eric, I mentioned how much I love your wife's taste in music. Like I, I post something about music and like, holy crap, she's an Eric B and Rocky and Kim fan. Awesome. You know, like yeah, yeah. that's the stuff that like I like. And like, for me, that's what keeps me kind of like in this little dalliance with it. Like I hate it most days, but on the flip side, like it's those little nuggets. Like I'm like, but finally then- she gets to see a sunset live from a kayak after six months of sunset fo- photos on Facebook. So like, but yeah, like you I said, was able though, to get those pictures of the sunset because I was working during the day and not on podcast. Just download them from right. Gary Mays. Uh, he's got yeah. great. But to, but to Bill's point though, that's, that's the, that was when, that was the good about Facebook was you yeah. could do that and make those connections. And it's gone now because they, they fucked that whole platform up so bad. And right. maybe that's, maybe they haven't screwed with the Instagram algorithm as much yet because yeah. I, I yet yeah yet because I find with Instagram why I still like it even though I hate that it's owned by Facebook I do like that I'm in my feed if I'm looking at Joe stuff or Eric stuff David whatever though the things I'm liking the, like the bands I follow on Instagram and different things I just get that content like I, I yeah, do yeah, get right. like I, I pray they don't fuck it up as bad they're, they're trying to monetize it the, the shit out of it and... well listen but instagram is so heavy in influencers and like meme accounts and facebook doesn't have but i don't see any of that stuff though right that's what i mean like it, i guess it's what is what's pure still for me with instagram is what, like to joe's point again going back to how they're just baiting joe to fucking dig in with people and you know and other people like they're just gonna feed his well, timeline a bunch often, of shit instagram doesn't often. do that instagram doesn't make me angry when i open it well, it's also the posting style in that, you know, where it's image based only. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. can't share a link to a post, you know, to right. an article. Yeah. You know, that's why it's forcing you back to what Bill was saying. It's more about you, you know, and that's it. But again, Facebook also recognizes, and as they typically do, they're just going to copy another successful format. And that's why their Reels platform will eventually start right. to morph into that AI centric type of network. It'll just start to power that that content that you will see from other influencers and from other bigger names. I you know I love it. I take you know it's not like a you know it's not a huge thing. All you need to do is sit there for five minutes, thumb through. You'll find some really good stuff, and I got some great stuff. Whether it's investing or architecture or yeah. cars or ex, you know exercise, whatever the interest of the week may be, I'm going to get something like that. Really, really cool. And they're in 15 second or 60 second snippets. Save it, and it's it's great. I don't need to. I don't use the platform to produce anything. I'm certainly not going to try to do it. But that's all. You know, that's a, it's a great consumption vehicle for me. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and I, and I just want to say because I know we're going long here, but I want to say I think one of the things that disheartened me is that I felt personally why I feel fuck Facebook is it's turned against us the people uh, to promote just like Bill said to promote a little bit of they need to make their money. But the other is, it seems like they're taking sides on what they want from us. And I could care less if, like, Zuckerberg, one of his earliest, uh, one of his earliest uh, venture capital uh, funds that he took on was from a Russian oligarch or Russian mob bosses or whatever. So he's sort of, uh, he's sort of in turn to them. But they're trying to control the narrative of how we live our lives. And it's not for the better that they're trying to help us. They're not, the, there's nothing about Facebook that is for the betterment of mankind. When it no. started to be able to connect with people from your high school, from the old times, to get information in new ways, that is what it was. It is no longer what it is. So I would say, you know, I would be shocked if uh, I'm going to have that app on my phone long at all, because it does start to get to me. And I, and I am using Twitter more often, and, and, and which I've had for a long time, but I'm just starting to get back into that. And and Instagram, I still uh, use a lot more. And really Dave phone, fun. that's me. Yeah, always. You're popular. Hey, so but you do, but you do. Dave, Dave, make as many TikToks as you want, though, because those things are hilarious. Yeah, the one where TikTok's he was running, and I'm not, and I'm not even on TikTok. When I was on vacation, I was standing at a gas pump, watching that one where you're staring at that crazy Mandela thing. And I had all these fucking like 
people who are, like, they're from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, right? Like these people like hunt with their bare hands. And here I am pumping gas, my flip flops and my, you know, import luxury car, laughing my fucking ass off of that thing just with the guy going, you know, whatever. So funny. And so I, I make as many of those as you want. Okay. Well, yeah. The other thing yeah, I want to say, just to kind of close things out, because I think we're wrapping up here, is that nobody cares about your least fucking BMW. Please stop posting stuff about that. Like all this notion of inflating your ego on Facebook to me, like, I think that that's maybe the, the, the slimiest sludge dirt of the foundation of all this other stuff we're talking about is this, this whole, like, pastiche of real life. And, like I said, that's the stuff where I start unfollow, 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 because, like, <laughs> I know you can't afford it. I know it. And yet, here you are doing that. And then it's like, oh, oh, oh it's got taken away from me, blah, 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 you know, like, that's the type of shit that like people just need to stop doing. I think, I think the that's more you use the fire that puts yeah, black I... gas in the fire that puts pink gas. Here, Brent, 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 final thoughts. I I think I think the I think the longer you, you the, the the more of a long term plan you you build to walk away from the platform, you actually start realizing there's other ways to do all the same connectivity with your friends and family. Yeah, and right. I, it's interesting with that because I'm I'm got my game plan to take my personal account off but i have like i have like i was reading about the the facebook page manager you can kind of keep that alive while you know there, there's there's workarounds to do it but i just think that you'd be surprised by how much more connected you probably are to the people you really want to be connected with by staying the hell off of it and i bring up our, our like martez may not see this if we put it on facebook or wherever we put it but Mar like talking to martez martez has been i i, I saw that the one day I was on for a rare thing to check a business account, I saw that it was his birthday and I, and I texted him and I said, dude, I'm so sorry, Mr. Birthday. He's like, it's okay. I haven't been on Facebook for like almost two years. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I think what, so my takeaway, the final thought is I think if you realize that you can actually walk away from it, you can wean yourself off of it. You're not so tied to it that it's the be all and end all. There are so many other ways to be connected to the people you want to do it. Facebook is not the glue that holds us together by any stretch. Dave, final thoughts. Um, final thoughts. Uh, I deleted Facebook from my phone. And um, I, I have gotten myself into a lot of other projects and I feel less stress. Honestly, I was looking at stuff and getting so aggravated. Mm -hmm. We're not even engaging has been the right thing for me to do. And I would, if, and if I post anything, it's usually something positive or good or whatever, and there's always lots of um, reactions, and that feels good, that's nice, you know. Um, but me personally, I was starting to get frustrated. And I would make comments on people, I'd see my friends fighting, and I'd say, oh, look, just like that, brother against brother. You had one of your best friends fighting with your dad. I, oh, yeah, wow. man. That really ruined uh, a lot of feelings. It really was bad news, <laughs> yeah. you know. <clears throat> And, 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 you know, the whole idea of telling someone to, listen, I, I hate it. And he, just, he told my dad, my Vietnam vet dad, to educate himself. That's terrible. <laughs> Ridiculous. You know, that they get so, like, he would never do that in front of him. Yeah. Your dad might slap him across the face. Like, you you know, know, he definitely uh, would Facebook, have, yeah. Facebook has taught us to lose respect for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for one yeah. Another. Eric, final thoughts. Use, time for a use TikTok. I don't use. I, I haven't gotten with TikTok. It seems like Vine, and I don't want to rehash all my old great jokes. You should. Should. That, that's fun. It brings some joy. You yeah, will uh, by by September. You will. Maybe uh, maybe when that changes hands, I'll be more interested in it. But I, I'm not super crazy agreed. about their uh, position. Yeah. And uh, Bill, final thoughts. I give you my final thoughts. I yeah. No more. No <laughs> more. Did. BMW leases, no more bitching about things you can't afford. <laughs> and I'm glad, hey, wait, no, final thought. I'm glad Eric shut that fucking dog up because the next show is going to be fuck yeah. Eric's dogs really quick. Yeah, really. And if, and if you posted it's on close. Facebook that you worked all night, it's because you spent all fucking day on Facebook arguing <laughs> with people. Come on. Who are you yeah, fucking listen, kidding? You cannot tell me how busy you are and how great yeah. your, uh, your livelihood is if you have time to post nonstop. So anyway, hey guys, uh, love you. You take care. I will see you in our text thread and on this. 
and in uh, in every single different platform that we're connected in, but fuck Facebook. And thanks to John for joining up. Good to see yeah, you. Thanks, John. Love you guys. Yeah, Stapes, wait, wait not to pitch anything the whole time. Like, did someone tranquilize that guy? No, he was, Eric must have texted him 10, 10, 10, 10 times, don't. Yeah. Don't. Don't. He's, he's, uh, yeah. he's a good Take care, man. Kudos, kudos to Stapes, man. He kept it under control. <laughs> see you, dude. Right, thanks, guys. See you, guys. Bye.